Hello everybody and welcome to your first set of video notes. This is Mr. Basil and we are going to be talking about learning target 1.3 which is all about conversions and we're going to be talking at the basic level today. And before we get too far into it I want to talk just a little bit where I'm going to call this part A of your video notes and the separate notes will talk about part B which is the full learning target on the basic level here. What you should already know is how to multiply fractions before this. If you're not 100% on how to multiply fractions, stick along and, and we'll get there together. The entire learning target at the basic level is I can use dimensional analysis to convert a metric unit with prefixes to another metric unit using prefixes with correct units. Now, don't worry about this too much yet. Part B will get into this a lot more. Um, for those of you that aren't familiar with this, there are four different levels to your learning targets that we're gonna be doing in this class. You've got approaching, which you should have studied already. That's talking about your metric prefixes. So that's your um, hecto, kilo, mega, giga, milli, micro, all that good stuff. That's your first level. And then your second level is basic. Everybody needs to be at this basic level. And then higher than that, we've got um, meets. And then the highest level we got is exceeds. But today we're just gonna be focusing on the basic level. So part A is all about what is dimensional analysis. And there are other fancier definitions, but my definition is that dimensional analysis is a way to do a conversion. by making the units work and putting that in quotes because that's kind of a weird way, an ambiguous term. Um, and what I mean by that is, let's say I've got um, 123 seconds. If I want to convert that into minutes, that's where I'm trying to get to, I am going to multiply by a ratio of seconds to minutes. So I want seconds to go away. So this is where your fraction multiplication is going in. I can just throw this over one and it means the same thing. If I want seconds to go away, I'm going to have to put seconds over here. And if I want minutes in the end, I'm going to put minutes on the top. And we all know that there are 60 seconds in one minute. And so if we follow along with our fraction rules, you multiply straight across. And then in the end, you divide the top by the bottom. So 123 times 1 is 123. 1 times 60 is still 60. So 123 divided by 60 equals 2.05 is our number. And then I've got seconds on the top and seconds on the bottom. So I can cross those two out and I'm left with minutes in the end. And that's what I end up with over here. So I end up with 2.05 minutes. And that'll be my answer for this. And again, the, all that we did here is we made the units work using some sort of known ratio. All right, let's look at our, let's look at a, an example related to what we've done in class. So, Let's say your boat that you built for the build the boat activity costs $28.50. Not too expensive, not too cheap. When I went to Mexico, the exchange rate was 16.5 peso for one USD, meaning US dollar. How much does your boat cost in pesos? So what we can do here is, first of all, just to make this clear, $28.50, that's kind of sloppy. That is 28.5 USD. So it's, it means the same thing. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the number that I'm given, which is 28.5 USD or US dollars. And then whenever you're doing a dimensional analysis problem, you're always going to multiply by some sort of ratio. And as always, you can put their, your given number over one. And what I want to do here is I want to make the units that I have cross out and then I want to get the units that I want in the end. And so if I want USD to cross out my US dollars, I'm going to put that on the bottom. And what I'm trying to get in the end is peso. I want to know what my boat costs in pesos. So I'm going to put peso on the top. Now I go back to my original rate, which was 16.5 peso for one USD. I match 16.5 peso to one USD. And now, and now I can cross out my US dollars because I've got that on the top and on the bottom. And what I do here is I multiply what's straight across and then in the end I'll do a division. So I do 28.5 times 16.5. So I get 470.25. And one times one is still just one. So 470.25 divided by one is 470.25. And since my USD crossed out, I'm left with peso. And that's what I end up with in the end. So I end up with 470.25 peso as my final answer. Now, there's a way that you can always double check to see if you did this correctly or not. And what we can do is double check this 28.5. Should my answer be bigger or smaller than one based off of my rate here? For every one USD, I get 16.5 peso. So if I have 28.5 dollars, of course I need to have more peso in the end. And look at that, in the end I end up with a lot more peso. Let's do another example to hit this home a little bit harder. Okay, now we have a boat that costs 56.75 peso. And what I want you to do is with, whenever something's given to you, I want you to underline that. Now, we're given this 56.75 peso, and the question's asking for, what is the cost of your boat in USD? So we wanna know how much it costs in USD. I like to box in what I'm looking for. So this time I'm given 56.75 peso. And the rate that I was given in the previous problem is 16.5 peso for every one USD. Now, the interesting thing about a rate is that it means the same thing. It might be a different math number, but it means the same thing if we flip it around. So one USD for every 16.5 peso. These two things mean the same thing in real life. They're different fractions, but they mean the same thing in real life because I can say that this is 16.5 peso for every one USD. And then down here I can say for every, all right, for, for every one USD, I have 16.5 peso. They mean the same thing, even though they're written a little bit differently. So over here, I'm gonna use that to my advantage because I want peso to go away. So peso has to go on the bottom. And I'm trying to get to USD in the end, so I've got USD that I'm gonna put on the top. Now, where does what number goes along with USD in both of these ratios? It's a one. And which number goes with peso in these? 16.5. So even though these are written differently, they mean the exact same thing. So I'm going to erase this here just so I can have a little bit more room to work with. Now I need to find my answer. And the way that I'm going to do that is just like what I did up, up before. Peso on the top, peso on the bottom. Those go away. And I multiply straight across, and then I'll divide in the end. So 56.75 times 1 
is 56.75. 1 times 16.5 is still 16.5. And what I have to do now in my calculator is do 56.75 divided by 16.5. And I end up with a number. And I'm going to go ahead and round that to 3.4. Four, three, nine. Actually, I'm going to do three point four four, and then the units on that would be USD, United States dollars, and that would be my answer. And now I can go back in the end and check to see if I did this correctly just by looking at my units and figuring out if this should be bigger or smaller than one. Now, for every one USD, I get 16.5 peso, and I've got 56.75 peso. Do I have more than $1 here? Do I have more than 16.5 peso? Yes, I do. So I know that I should have more than $1 in the end, and so that's how I can check my answer. Stay tuned for the next video notes for how to use metric prefixes in order to do the same thing.